WIFO-FM in Jessa, Big Dog Country Radio, 105.5 FM. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by First Southern Bank, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, Murphy Builder Supply, and Aquinnan Associates. Hi, I'm Mandy Yeomans. And I'm Raymond Brown with First Southern Bank. As your locally-owned community bank, we're here to help our community grow. Our customers are why we are here. You can tell we want your business. We offer all types of deposit products, personal and business. We have fast, efficient service, and yes, we have online banking too. I'm sure we have an account to fit your needs. Stop by or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. For FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings in Wayne County is a popular thing. To dine in or take out for one delicious meal, and with the low great prices, it's simply a steal. Famous for the variety of sauces, mild, wild, and senior inferno. When it's time to eat lunch or dinner, Damon's Restaurant the place to go. Located in the middle of town on West Cherry Street, yes, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings simply can't be beat. So next time you're hungry and looking for a great meal, head to Damon's Restaurant and enjoy a great deal. The number to call is easy, 588-WING, 588-9464, the real thing. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, those chicken wings are a very popular thing. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Hi, Wayne and surrounding counties. This is Sean O'Quinn with O'Quinn and Associates. The one constant in life is change. Throughout our lives, we will go down roads that we never imagined. I have decided that it is time for me to make a change. I have decided to start my own independent insurance agency. What does this mean for you? Better rates and multiple companies. Give us a call at our new number, 912-385-1000, or stop by and see us. We are still at 212 South 1st Street, and we look forward to serving you. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. The world famous Butch and Bob Show. All right, world-famous Butch and Bob show right here on WIFO, 105.5 FM in Jessup. And we've got a candidate for office out in the green room. He will be here in a moment. But right now we have Beth Forbes from Hope Narrative in here with us. Good morning, Beth. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. You know, we've been running some announcements for you there for Hope Narrative, and y'all got an event coming up tomorrow. Tell us what's going on. I sure will. The Hope Narrative is a faith-based event uh, offering support for folks who are going through infertility or the death of a baby. Uh, these life-changing devastations really are too hard to walk through alone. And so the Hope Narrative is there to bring some community and a lot of encouragement and hope for people who are walking through these really difficult seasons. Tell us what, you know, where the event's going to be, what people can expect when they sure. go there. Uh, the event's going to be held at Wayne Christian Academy uh, tomorrow morning beginning at 8 o'clock. Um, at this event, uh, we're going to have speakers come in who have walked through these seasons. Uh, people who have gone through infertility, through secondary infertility. <clears throat> We'll have events for uh, even for men because the men are affected by this too. Sometimes we don't think about our husbands being affected, uh, but they are. Well, for um, some men, it may make them think they're less of a man. Absolutely. Yeah. And this women will sometimes talk about it, but a lot of times the guys suffer no, in silence. Yeah, no, you know we've got to yeah, clam up and right. Those emotions, yeah. <laughs> and so we have a, a man who's coming to share his story, but we have women who will be or speakers who are coming in to talk about how they've survived the death of their baby, what they've done as they've walked through the struggle to conceive when it just doesn't happen for them you know and what they've had to do going through treatment or making the decision to pursue treatment and, and a variety of things we'll also have a memorial service for um, miscarried and stillborn babies and even for embryos lost in the IVF process All right now so when you're talking about there's really two different uh, items we're talking about one is infertility mm -hmm. and you had mentioned uh, before we went on the air the stats on the um, men women mm -hmm. on infertility go over that again? Sure. Infertility affects one in eight couples of childbearing age. That's actually the same prevalence as breast cancer. Um, and 
it affects 40% of the time it comes from the female side. 40% of the time it comes from the male side. About 20% of the time there's a problem on both the male and the female now side. That, that stat right there really, really amazed me that 20% of the time that when people can't have mm-hmm. babies for some reason or mm-hmm. other, it's both of them. Yes, sir. Just not one or the other. That's right. It's, it's a couple's issue, definitely. Even when the physical problem lies within just the woman or just the man, the whole couple is affected. Right, right. Absolutely. Okay. And so that can mentally affect folks who really want to have kids, but cannot absolutely it affects every aspect of your life it affects your relationship it affects you financially because most of the time insurance companies don't pay for this type of treatment Mm -hmm. it affects uh, your your friendships because when you have friends and they all have children and you don't you feel you start to feel very isolated Mm -hmm. it affects you on a spiritual level because you wonder what you've done that may have you know that angered god which is not the issue it's not the issue but it feels like it it affects every area of your life and this weekend we want to bring those those conversations to the surface and talk about it so folks can come there who have the situations where it could be the woman or the man or both and and talk through these issues and 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 hear what other people have gone through there and how to uh how to to work through it effectively and sometimes when you're going through this you feel so alone like you're the only person who ha- who has the feelings that you're struggling with and this weekend will show you you are not alone it's going to be so many resources that you can take with you after the conference it's going to be an amazing time of support all right and the other side of it is the uh is the the death of infants and when you say infants are you actually talking about up to the time they're born or right at at when they're born is that you correct know, or I'm, right afterwards we have always said we're not going to put an age limit on it because grief is grief okay. and that hurt is hurt and we actually acknowledge even embryos lost in the ivf process because people will put so much emotional um desire into those embryos that can grow into babies right. and when those embryos don't survive the thaw or they don't a pregnancy doesn't result we even honor and recognize those embryos and then we honor and recognize the babies that are lost to miscarriage or stillbirth or early infant loss okay all you the know. way up through early infant loss sure okay. absolutely and, and we'll recognize and honor those babies in our memorial service there's going to be a live butterfly release as a part of that service and okay. so many times those babies are not recognized and honored and the parents kind of grieve in silence, and we want to we want to help you honor and remember those babies. That's got to be, you know, I've known people like that. It's a very emotional event. I mean, it you is. could be three months along, six months along, mm-hmm. and then have a miscarriage, or mm-hmm. as you mentioned, stillborn, or, or lost, uh, you know, within the first several months, or whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. for some reason after the baby's born, and it's just a, a tremendous sense of grief and loss to these couples. And tomorrow, this Hope Narrative Conference folks will be able to uh, be with people and to uh, to to learn and to have comfort in the situation tomorrow on on people have gone through this and how to effectively get through it yes sir and to to be in a room full of people who get it uh, that that is something that that can be a game changer for you while you walk through this season okay so this this is open uh, to folks tomorrow at wayne christian academy on sunset boulevard you said it starts at eight take us to the process a person gets there at eight what what will they do what is there any cost is it free is there anything else going on other than just the the, the people talking tell us to what they're going to what can they expect they can check out everything the schedule who the speakers are all about the memorial service at hope narrative.org all of that information is there. They can register for it there. It's not too late. There's still room for you to come at hopenarrative.org. Hopenarrative.org starts at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning at Wayne Christian Academy on Sunset Boulevard in Jessup. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, anything else that you would like to say about the, the event itself? I know you, you said it's open to anybody that, that feels like they need this type of uh, of comforting. It can also be um, very valuable to you if you have friends or loved ones who are going through it so that you know how to better support them. It can be hard if, if it's not you that's walking through it, but your daughter, your sister, your friend is going through it and you don't know how to support them. This is a great resource for you to kind of learn how, to learn how to support them, because sometimes it's hard to know what to say and what to do. So this is a very valuable resource for, for family uh, to know how to help. When you come to this resource, you're going to walk away with community. 
And when you feel so isolated, community is everything. You're going to walk away with community. You're going to walk away with resources that will carry you through long after this event is over. And uh, we can also help you get connected with support groups, which is amazing. Um, and there's so much that, that you'll gain out of this conference. We would love to see you there. Okay. Hope Narrative dot org check it out they'll have all the details there for you and then it starts at eight o'clock tomorrow morning at wayne christian academy on sunset boulevard in jessup well uh beth appreciate you coming in this morning and informing the folks it, uh, it's a great community service that's being done we sure appreciate you having us on this morning okay all take right. care all right 105.5 fm in jessup big dog country radio more of the world famous butch and bob show in just a moment South Georgia your WIFO forecast. Happy weekend, sunshine, southeast breeze, highs mid 80s. Partly cloudy, upper 50s for tonight. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, a 40% chance of afternoon showers and thunderstorms, highs mid 80s. Sunday, partly sunny, 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms, upper 80s. Monday, a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms. Georgia Chief Meteorologist John Weatherby in the Georgia 811 Weather Center. Contact 811 before you dig. When further treatment is no longer an option, hospice can provide services to manage symptoms and difficulties caused by illness. Emotional, psychosocial, and spiritual care, as well as support to the families and caregivers, are all part of hospice care. Hospice of South Georgia has been a part of the health community in Wayne and surrounding counties since 1998. The professional yet compassionate attention provided by our staff is unsurpassed. Widely supported by donations from the local population, Hospice of South Georgia is the local nonprofit hospice in Wayne County. Our administrative office is located at 1625 Sunset Boulevard and Hospice of South Georgia accepts anyone who meets hospice criteria regardless of their ability to pay. Please call 912-588-0080 to speak with someone about hospice care. That was 912-588-0080. We are your hometown hospice and we are here to serve you. Hospice of South Georgia working to add life to your days. 105.5 FM, Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO. We continue on with the world-famous Butch and Bob show. Well, Bob, we got another guest in here this morning. Yeah, as we mentioned, early voting begins Monday, May 2nd, for these local and statewide races. We've got another candidate running for county commissioner in District 1. Stephen Jones joins us. Stephen, good to see you. Appreciate you coming in. Tell us why you decided to run for county commissioner. You're going to have to get All closer right, to that man. microphone. There you go. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, the reason why I'm running is, uh, I, you know, you hear in the community there's a lot of uh, strife between communities as far as our uh, governments. And one of the biggest things that I'm trying to do is uh, bring some continuity there. I've been in, you know, I was on the city council in Odom. We had a good thing going there. And uh, we had a lot of stuff we were able to get done. Uh, I've got, I'm well rooted in this community. I own a business in this community. I own a Crossroads Country Store out in Madra Springs. A lot of people know me. Uh, so I would like to bring some continuity here. My kids uh, live here, and they have to drive out of town to work. Uh, so one of the things we do is uh, I think we need to try and get some good-paying jobs back here so our kids can actually go to school, come back here, and work and live right here where they come from. Uh, I go to church right across the street over there, and we're building a big development over there, you know what I mean, as far as the industrial development. And um, so, but uh, just trying to bring some continuity, transparency, you know, among all the uh, IDA, the, the board of commissioners, city council, and just getting everybody on the same page so we could uh, grow this community. I mean, the community is what we're here for, and that's who we serve. How's the campaign going? Like I said, Monday begins early voting. I'm sure you've been out talking to people. What, yeah, what's on the minds uh, of the I'll be honest with you. I've, I've been out. Um, I've talked to a lot of people through my, through my convenience store. Um, just went to, to some people inside the communities over in Odom and all. I'm actually having a meet and greet this afternoon from 3 to 6 at the Odom Gym. And uh, the old gym, where the old gym used to be as far as the kids used to use. And um, we're also having a meet and greet actually at my convenience store on Saturday from 3 to 6. And everybody's more than welcome to come by. Um, I've got signs if you want to put signs out. Uh, I'm, I'm not one to litter people's yard with a lot of signs. <laughs> Uh, cause some people, you know, they just, they just don't like stuff in their yard. So, uh, but I have signs If some people want signs. We've put them out on the roads, um, you know, in key places. So, um, but, uh, I'm transparent. Uh, everybody, a lot of people know me. I've coached here for 13 years. 
Uh, so I lot, know a lot of people, but a lot of pe- older people, I guess, is the ones who really don't know who I am based on uh, what I've heard. Uh, my grandparents were actually born and raised right there in Odom. My grandfather and, uh, owned a big farm out there. Uh, so all my brothers and my brother lives in Savannah. Um, but my grandparents and my aunts and uncles are all from here. So they're well rooted here. The Starlins and the Joneses from Odom. The Starlins are from Jessup. Uh, so uh, and that's one reason why I'm going to have the meet and greet over in Odom today. So if people want to come by and see who I am, they can do that. District 1, mainly the Odom area. Where's District 1 going to? District 1 starts out over on Holmesville Road. It comes up to the Odom Tillman uh, Road, cuts through there, uh, goes to Tillman Anderson, cuts across uh, 341, over by uh, Tank Road through Whippoorwill, comes up Red Hill, um, but it also includes part of um, Placid Acres as well. It runs up uh, 169 for a little bit of finger right there. It also includes from 4th Street, a lot of people don't realize this, from Ohio Road over across from the Minute Stop, and it goes down uh, Spring Grove Road, about four roads down on the left. Uh, so, uh, And then it picks up that finger right there off of um, Spring Grove going back toward Red Hill. And uh, like Minnow Drive over off of Red Hill Road, it cuts back down Minnow Drive, and then from there goes all the way to the county line. So it's basically the north, uh, north. The actually, it's northeast. North, north, yeah, northeast, northeast part of the county. Northeast part of the county. That's correct. County. Yeah, it's a lot. There's a lot of territory over there to cover. Yeah. Me and my wife went out and put out signs, and it took us almost two and a half days just to run to outline areas and putting signs. Yeah, when you out. get down to rural areas like that, people are so spread apart. You know, you got the same, almost the same amount in each district, but That's you get correct. like in yeah. the, into a city like Jessup, you got to closer in together but out in the county it really spreads out right yeah me and tim hopkins was talking about that i mean you might pull up somebody's driveway and it might be i mean you know 200 yards long i mean my driveway is three or almost 400 yards long people's kind of skeptic about pulling in there you know what i mean <laughs> uh so and that's the thing i mean so that's why we try to put a lot of our signs out at intersections you know what i mean because of that reason and uh but i mean Look, man, that's one of our biggest things here is transparency. We got to keep, and I know everybody's preaching on that. Uh, and uh, but you know, clarity. I mean, it's just one of those things that uh, you know you hear. And our tax burden. I look, I'm a landowner. I own 40 acres. I own my convenience store, so I understand how that tax burden works. It hits me just like it does everybody else. And some of the people in our district are large landowners. And when you're talking about going up five mils on taxes. I mean, it really hits their pocketbook, you know, and so we got to work on getting our tax burden down. And I think there's ways of doing that. Um, you know, look here, you, everybody says cut the budget. Well, when you cut budget, you also cut services. So we've got to find a uh, happy median in there where we can eliminate a little bit and then turn around and cut that burden down. If we can invest our some of our excess money in annuities and get a return on our investment, you know, that would help out a lot. Um, and we actually did that over in Odom and have money in the, in the bank to be able to do that with to keep that burden from hitting the taxpayers. And I think we can do that. You know, it's just a matter of getting that excess money and putting it up uh, without spending it. Just because you got it, you don't mean you have to spend it. You know, look, I work off a budget every day because I own my own business. Um, and if you want to really try a budget, buy you a convenience store. <laughs> I'm just telling you, you'll learn how to budget real quick. And you uh, said that's so, in Madrid Springs? Yes, yeah, sir. It's a Crossroads Country Store. Um, oh, Crossroads. Really, yes, sir. Crossroads, uh, so it's right past Madrid Springs. There you it's the go. Next that's one on down, that's there. One on down on the left. That's correct. We're right on, there at New Hope Road. That's right. New yeah. Hope, Beards Bluff, yep. and uh, Billy Clanton. I tell you, I mean, I worked with Mr. Billy and when I bought the store, and him and Shanda, they were good people to work with. And, uh, I, you know, he used to come in the store quite a bit before he passed away. And and uh, But, I mean, if anybody has anything as far as me, I'm transparent. People know me how I am. I'm not a yes man. I'm not a no man. I try to make sure I've got all the facts before I talk about something. And, uh, you know, that's why I've been doing some investigating on this uh, new complex that they want to build, you know, this judicial complex. And um, so, you know, that's one of the things that's a hot topic right now. And just joining us, Stephen Jones, candidate for District 1 County Commissioner in the studios with us against three candidate race. Uh, so it'll be interesting how it all turns out on May 24th, possibly a runoff. But. It'll be decided shortly after that, but 
when you're out campaigning, what's on the minds of the residents? Anything in particular besides? Yes, sir. The big thing is, that, I mean, everybody, it's about taxes, man. Everybody's worried about their taxes even going up even further. Whenever they hear about us going to spend money to buy, to, to build something, the first thing they think of is it's going to come back on the taxpayers. And hopefully, you know, I don't know if we'll be able to get some grants. A lot of this is all in the preliminary stages right now. Um, I've talked to Herschel. I've talked to some people. they got a municipality. Uh, authority right now I know some people that's on that talking to them I went and talked to Chuck Mosley and these the group that come in actually went around and talked to each one of the clerks the judges to find out exactly what they wanted um, so there's really not a number out there I've heard numbers all over the place you know and I'm not gonna say a number because I don't really know because it's all preliminary right now so we're waiting on you know stuff to come back but the judicial system up in Atlanta is driving a lot of this and look, we can either build what we need, or we can let people Atlanta come down and say, no, this is what you're going to have, and this is what you're going to build. So that's why you see a lot of this stuff out here right now. Right. The main thing is security. You know, that's right, and that's the, the thing. The, I mean, the, the, security the for these judges. Yeah, the courthouse is so antiquated. They don't that's have right. the security to bring prisoners in, yeah. you know, things like that. So this is all being, like I said, it's been pushed by the judges. That's correct. And, and uh, yes, sir. they're pretty much telling you they've got to have a secure location and so they're talking about exactly a judicial right. complex talking so. to chuck uh he looked at one of the drawings and he told me that they would be bringing prisoners in nobody would even see these prisoners they'd be unloaded in a secured area put on elevators and carried right up to a holding cell you know and uh because i mean think about it right now they bring the prisoners in the side of the courthouse over there you got a church right there you got kids in school right there you know it's just it's not a good environment so um <laughs> And uh, but one of the other things, like we were talking about, as far as the economic development, we need to get some more industry here and to be able to bring our kids back here because a lot of them are going to school, staying off. You know, a lot of people want to come back here, but there's not a lot of high paying jobs here. And that's one of the things we need to focus on. OK, look, well, we ask the candidates all the time, you know, as we mentioned, early voting begins Monday when they walk in District 1, there'll be three candidates on that ballot. So why should they select Stephen Jones as their county commissioner? Well, I'll tell you why. It's, uh, I want to reduce the tax burden. I want to prioritize the county spending and sa without sacrificing our services. Um, try to work to bring the industry here to ensure the quality of life for our future generations, man. And uh, that's, that's the main thing is, uh, you know, preparing for the future, you know, for our guys and for these, for these kids coming up. Because I got two granddaughters, two sons. So, okay. We well, we appreciate you coming in. We All right. Best of luck. Good luck. Said, okay. Well, I uh, sure do appreciate the opportunity. Just want to stress again the people the early voting yeah. begins Monday, runs okay. Monday up to May 20th, two early Saturday voting days, May 7th and May 14th. The time from that is okay. 9 to 5. And all the early voting again here in Wayne County takes place at the Hall Richardson Recreation Center, located at 644 North 4th Street. So, it's it's here before you know it. Uh, you know, you know, I'm sure between now and the, it's going to fly. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. It seems like we just qualified, you know, and and uh, trying to get out signs, talk to people, and get around. I mean, like I said, when you got a big area to cover, you know, and and the biggest thing is trying to meet people because everybody's at work, you know. And then when they get home, they don't want to be aggravated with somebody knocking on the door. <laughs> so, you know, right. say, so, but I uh, but I do want to mention one thing before sure. y'all cut us off. Uh, if you have any questions on what district you vote. Um, I'll leave this here. Y'all can post it on y'all's website. Um, there's a website you can go to. It's called it's www.mvp.sos.ga.gov. And you can go on there, and you can register to vote there if you've just moved into this yeah, area. Yeah, you can vote now. That, yeah. that day's passed. And, uh, <laughs> so, um, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's, if you want to check to find out what district you're in, you can also do it on that uh, website. There's a lot of stuff you I'm can do curious, on that website. I'm just curious. Have you gotten your... Uh, Car, you know, they promoted. Them. I haven't seen any cars. I haven't no. seen any cars either. They said no. they're going to send those out. I haven't seen, I haven't seen anything. So and, I haven't uh, heard anybody getting those. So they said they're going to, I mean, they said that flyer saying they, they're going to send out those precinct cars to everybody, but I haven't heard anybody got one. So I don't know what so, that's about. And uh, one of the other things is look, and if anybody, you know, wants to ask anybody about me, you can talk to Justin Franks, Mickey Whittington, uh, Ronnie Jones, all these guys. I actually used to sell to the, to the paper mill out there. So I know a lot of them guys out there. Hey, just ask somebody. I coached here for 13 years. A lot of these younger kids, they know me. They're, they're teen and they're 25 and 30 years old. Now some of the kids I coach, they come in the convenience store. And, and all the people know, that's how they know me is Coach Jones or Steve or, you know, somebody said Steve and Jones, like y'all did on the radio. People's like, who's that? 
And then when they, they did a misprint on the, in the news in the Press Sentinel, and they called me Pete Jones, somebody <laughs> called. Yeah, they called me and said, "Hey, Steve, did you pull out the race?" I said, "No, uh, uh-uh, no, why?" They said, "Well, they said Pete Jones is running now." I'm like, "No," so I called Eric, and Eric said, "Oh my God, we made it was a mistake. We apologize for that." <laughs> so we got a lot of phone calls because of that. It was crazy. All right, okay. Well, take care. All right, well, we luck. thank y'all again. Right. Thank you, you very much. Fun? That's it. That's it. All right. All right, the world-famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by First Southern Bank, by Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, Murphy Builder Supply, and by O'Quinn & Associates.